Okay. And then if you're ready, I'll click go live. You ready? Ready when you are. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. It will tell us in a second. Preparing. Okay, we're on. <laughs> so right. greetings, everyone. Uh, I am Lady Amy Mitchell with Houses of Windsor, and this is virtual tea time with Lady Amy. And today my special guest is Joe Land of Social Land, and he is uh, calling in from England. <laughs> so Hi, guys. Hey. How you doing? Welcome, Joe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So Joe and I know each other through the wonderful organization that is BNI, <laughs> Business Networking International. And uh, we had a one-to-one, -one, gosh, what was that, in like August or September or something? A few months ago now, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And we've been trying to do this <laughs> ever since, but we had um, the two different days that we had it planned. The first one was Hurricane Helene, I think, here. And then the second time that we had it planned was Hurricane Milton. <laughs> so I had to keep canceling. So uh, we don't get those over here. So <laughs> Right, right, right. So it's like, oh, my gosh, this is wild. So it was like the two big ones that we had just happened to be the two days that we were scheduled. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yes, yeah, so we finally got, got to it. And I wanted to ask you or have you share with people. Uh, so just a little bit about your company, and then we'll dive into you as a person. <laughs> Sure, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I run a, a few different businesses, but my primary one is Social Land. So, Joe Land, Social Land. Yeah. But the really, really short version of what it is, is we are essentially a marketing agency. Uh, however, it's wrapped up under marketing management. So, basically, what that means is it's a little bit like a plug in marketing department for businesses. So, rather than a, a company hiring, a marketing manager who will then strategize and tell them what they need to do, who then needs to be given a budget to go off to a website agency, to a social agency. We have a team of marketing managers who then come up behind them with a team of people who carry out the work. So we've got the marketing manager to do the strategy and coordinate it. And then we also have in-house web developers, video editors, graphic designers, paid ad specialists, et cetera, if that makes sense. Right, right. So that's awesome. So that means like for the small business owner or, or medium-sized business, right, that doesn't have their own marketing department, instead of someone having to work with like, a bunch of different people right like hands out everywhere for like the website and the social media and all the different things right videographer all the things you said mm -hmm. this way they just hire you and then you're like the main point of contact to yeah <laughs> to get all that. Stuff exactly. done. it makes people's lives easier and this is one thing but it's it, it, you know it makes a whole marketing department accessible to a company who otherwise wouldn't be able to hire the whole team right, uh, but right. also it kind of offers a little bit of like trust and reassurance because if you have multiple different people doing multiple different things and they right. don't know each other and they're not related in any oh, way, right. what's going to happen is you're going to get the video editor blaming the website person, the website person blaming the ads person. Right, you right. Get the idea. Whereas if it's all kept internally, there is nowhere else to go and point fingers at because it's us, right? So right, right. there's a lot of pressure on what it is that we're doing, but it also offers the kind of the client a bit of reassurance that we're not doing this to just take a bit of money we're doing it because we actually believe what they they're right. doing like is profitable or whatever right so right right that makes sense and then also yeah like uh as far as like kind of keeping a cohesive idea right so it's not like each person's kind of off with their own interpretation of what the company's telling them yeah yeah they yeah, can yeah. we can get messy them. otherwise right so definitely right. yeah right so that's awesome um but so I said you're calling from England. Uh, where in England are you? So I'm based in Essex. Usually I would just say London, but I know you know England a little bit better than most yeah, yeah. people. So Essex, which is obviously just outside of London, right. basically. Okay, beautiful. And are you originally from there? I am. I'm. I'm. I'm originally from Essex, and I've lived in Essex my entire life. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't. I haven't moved very far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Is all your family still there? Yeah, all my family is still there. Yeah, I mean, at the minute, it's, uh, you know, even I've been looking at other places in the world that I might be able to live with, you know, but right. it's uh, it's a bit miserable here. I know you love England, right? But it is a little bit <laughs> right. sometimes. I think you'd probably move over here and then uh, be a little bit sad by the weather. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. As much as I love England, it's like I am looking, you know, I'm in Florida. So it's like I am looking outside and it's like blue skies and sunny. Uh, yeah, not here. here yeah, but it is, I can see your clouds, <laughs> but I, uh, 
it is it's been cold for us this week uh for us floridians um i don't know what it is in celsius uh i should have my little conversion up real quick but it has been right now it's 61 degrees fahrenheit and uh then It's 16 degrees. That's warm. okay right yeah yeah, yeah. and and this morning it was like 41 degrees <laughs> okay. um, That's probably getting on the chillier side. Of yeah that's it. Okay. Gonna, yeah so it's not yet freezing yeah because for us 32 is like freezing point yeah 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 okay so 41 degrees fahrenheit five degrees is about what it is over here for the last like month or so so <laughs> No, so, yeah, I, yeah, I don't mind popping places if you want. That's fine by me. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and my well, I'll say, but you're still warmer than uh, where I'm from is Indiana, which is up north. And my parents and my brother and everybody still live there. And uh, my mom said it's been in the teens, so it's been like twelve, you know, thirteen, fifteen, whatever degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. <laughs> so. That's so negative, basically over. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like before wind chill and all of the other stuff that makes it even colder. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So I am happy to be in uh Florida. You know, I'll say life goal of mine is to be able to travel to England as much as I want or as long as I want. <laughs> have you <laughs> have you been to England? Have you been to England before? You have, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where. Yeah. So the obsession stems from when I went there first as a fourteen-year-old and with like a student trip and we were there for three weeks we were to england wales scotland and ireland um and it was very fun and that's when i learned who prince william was and he was in okay. he was in his prime he was i don't know if he's like 16 <laughs> or whatever um but so by the end of that three-week trip i was known as the president of the prince william fan club <laughs> <because> <laughs> The obsession okay. grew quickly. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. And uh, so speaking of obsessions and whatnot, right? So I said, one of the things I like to talk about on the the virtual tea time interview show is to find out like, so I have, you know, I say I'm like a Christmas nut, meaning that like I love Christmas stuff, obviously. Yeah. Um, I am obsessed with England. And now that I'm older, people are like, you should just say that you're like, passionate about it <laughs> like obsession <laughs> sounds too much same thing just yeah i know it's like it's the same yeah um and then i'm also known for uh loving the band hansen uh which okay. yeah you may or may not be aware of them but in 1997 they had their big hit called mbop and i was like 11 and uh they have still been doing stuff ever since and like we get it I say we, my Hanson friend community, like we go see him <laughs> every year. That's um, fine. Are they a British band or are they American? No, they're American. So they're uh -huh. out of Oklahoma. So they're like out West. Um, and cool. yeah, and they actually never moved to LA or anything. Like they have stayed stationed in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, which <laughs> I would not want to live there. Uh, not only does it get cold, um, like they get hot summers, but it gets cold, but also they are known for lots of tornadoes a lot okay of tornadoes. right so like no thank you <laughs> yeah, you probably get enough where you are anyway right so or hurricanes yeah it's like we get yeah it's like tornadoes can sometimes come with hurricanes they don't scare me as much here sometimes i guess some people get a little bit of bad tornadoes but it's nothing like in like tornado alley we're like oklahoma and kansas um and even up in indiana where i lived like those tornadoes always seem scarier than what comes sure. with a hurricane here uh yeah so i at least prefer the heads up of hurricanes <laughs> for, for yeah, instance, like short coming. heads up of a, of a tornado <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 um but so my point uh is that i wanted to know what is something that's not work related that you are like passionate about obsessed with some people don't have obsessions i feel like it's a personality type <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah you probably but, think it is actually, but like yeah, but I think that personality type so that's okay <laughs> yeah okay good good yeah so like a very special interest so what is something that comes to mind for that for you so there, there's probably two main things mm -hmm. one of them we've already had a little bit of a conversation about i'll yeah. say that for the second thing the first uh, the, the, the the first one and the, probably the main one is gaming uh oh, okay. which is really stereotypical so basically i uh 
Call of Duty in particular was the game yeah. that I played, which you probably heard of, but yes. how I it is actually kind of work related. So how I actually ended up doing what I'm doing now and mm -hmm. you know marketing and everything was because so I'm 27 now. When I was right. 13 ish, maybe about 12 or 13, I used to play Call of Duty a lot. Yeah. Uh, for context, I use a wheelchair, so I wasn't like out playing like football, rugby, oh, or anything. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. was. I was putting my. I'm, I'm super competitive. I was putting my competitive energy into gaming, right? So I became like very very good <laughs> at that. And I started to make like YouTube videos on right. teaching people how to get better at Call of Duty. And it's as tragic as that sounds, right? And I ended up building up quite like quite a following on there, like back oh, in wow. the day on YouTube. So like, you know, it wasn't um, anything special. I used to get like a check through the door from Google when I was like 13. Yeah, but yeah. like, wow, I can like play games and right. post it and get paid for it. Like That's what? I didn't, I didn't know, no. So that was my eureka moment for business. Yeah, but yeah. gaming is something that has... I've done for literally as long as I can remember. It's absolutely formed who I am as a person, yeah. without a doubt, in terms of like just confidence, speaking to people, yeah. meeting new people. Like I've got friends from all around the world because of gaming. I've got one of my best friends is mm -hmm. somebody who lives the other end of the country of me. And I've played games with him on my team for the last like eight years. And I still yeah. keep in touch with him. And it's uh cool. it's pretty amazing. I don't play Call of Duty anymore, but I do still game. So well, I say I don't play, I don't play it competitively anymore so i did okay. used to like compete for money and i traveled to las vegas to play in a tournament and all oh these gosh. kinds of things which is cool, uh, really I, did, cool. I didn't win obviously but uh but that's cool good experience anyway yeah <laughs> right right well so uh sorry i'm pouring my tea and also my cat is trying to spill my tea so that's, right. <laughs> that's why right. i'm like over here looking at this way but um so yeah, so explain for people like me who are only like loosely familiar with Call of Duty and I'll say game. So I'm so I'm 38 and I mean, my brother played games and I would play games with him. But like, I feel like we tapped out at like uh, whatever was after like Nintendo 64. Like, I don't know. I mean, he still played stuff probably. But for me and my awareness, right, like I remember what GameCube coming out for a second. I don't think we played it. And then like, I don't know, the different PlayStations or Xbox yeah. or whatever. Um, but it was all before you could play with anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of your house. <laughs> yes. Like you're just yeah, on your TV. So um, so Call of Duty, first of all, is that always on the computer or is that a gaming system or both it was originally so it's usually on all platforms so it's like you can get it on playstation or xbox or computer oh, okay. uh the competitive side of it's so like the leagues like like your football leagues or something of call of duty were did used to be played on xbox okay and then it got bought out by playstation so it's played on playstation okay. and then it got bought out by uh microsoft xbox oh again so yeah. it's back on the playstation uh, now it's back onto computer again so oh. that is available on every device but where the the top players are kind of right. like moving around depending on what the competition's on if it's, that makes sense it does but that's also interesting that i guess it if it's so popular that it would even keep selling like that people wouldn't hold on to it or companies I, wouldn't hold on to it right? i i i know I, I don't i mean to give you an idea like i mentioned i went and played in the tournament and it's absolutely yeah. crazy it's a really big deal as well in the sense of there was 256 teams there. There's four people on each team. Oh and God. this big event, I forget, it was in the uh, Hard Rock, like, oh, yeah, scene, like whatever it was. Yeah, like, somewhere right? in there. And um, it's it's like the, the the prize for winning that tournament for the team was, right? that was $1.2 million was the prize for winning that tournament. Yeah. So it's no like little, it's not like people are going there to play for, I don't know, a couple yeah. of hundred thousand, right. a couple of hundred pounds or or right, a thousand right. pounds. It's, it's like, like big, millions. big money. Yeah. 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 It's it, it's it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so are there any other games in that like class or whatever that also get bought and move around like that? Or is Call of Duty kind of like the top one that has um, or has like that legacy, I guess. <laughs> there there's definitely games, competitive games. And when I say competitive, I mean ones that people can like play against each other and and like compete for right. money and that sort of stuff there's loads of competitive games and there's ones that are far more popular than call of duty are okay 
ones that I don't even play, like League of Legends and okay. Dota. I've, I've heard of World of Warcraft, right? World of Warcraft. I'm not entirely sure if that's a competitive game. Is that game not the same? Not. Okay. I don't know. In general, you, the competitive games in general are ones where it's like you've got one team of like, like so four or five people, you've got another team, and then it's like uh, okay, they, they they so it could be like they shoot each other in Call of Duty or it's like tactical right, right. stuff or whatever. But have to work together. Uh, right. Okay. So this is a, this is a big thing. I'm a I say my spare time, right? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I'm really passionate about gaming in the yeah. sense of one of my biggest, biggest pet peeves is when I hear older people. I mean, I'm a parent now. I would used to say parents, but that's just so not true right, anymore. Now, you, oh, now you're right, part of oh, it. <laughs> I know, right? So older people, when I would hear them say, oh, you know, you know, my son, he's only allowed to play 30 minutes a day because it's, you know, it will rot his brain playing the game, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, I get why people maybe think that, but like, you know, who who I am is due to gaming. I learned like, for example, I don't just mean social aspect of it. I mean like I run a business and I, you know, I have to make decisions super quickly, I have to critically oh, right. think, I do all of these sorts of things. And right. it might sound really silly, but like just using Call of Duty as an example, yeah. when you've got two teams and you've got to do teamwork and you've right. got to have knowledge of where you're playing and what's going on and be reactive to everything right, that's right. happening and make a decision instantly. And especially when there's money on the line, it's like serious. Oh, right. Yeah, that's true. That makes so sense. It's yeah. like, actually, I am a big believer of like, um, do you ever remember on the Nintendo DS, there was a thing called like brain training and you could like do like puzzles and it was like- I feel like you... I remember like commercials for it. Yeah, yeah, training. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like gaming is is that. For, it's, it's all gaming, brain training. I believe training. gaming is brain training, right? right. Like, I, I, like I actually do think that. There's obviously like, you've got to be able to control yourself, right? Which sure. I definitely didn't do when I was younger. But yeah. um, like gaming, I think is a, in general- Right. A, a positive thing That's you know I, I think I, th I, I actually do believe that gaming has a more positive impact on most people than it does negative and I think if you probably ask right. like your general day-to-day -day person they'd say gaming is a bad thing or something like that and it's just so not true so right right yeah. I'd say most likely the people who say gaming is a bad thing like have no personal experience with it right like they don't they yeah. don't know and like when you say 30 minutes a day or whatever like to me I'm like that doesn't sound like enough time to do like anything in a game, right? And this is like, again, playing when we used to play and it meant nothing and no one could see it. <laughs> and like, we were just playing right. in the house. I'm like, you need more than 30 minutes, like. <laughs> to load it up and start the game and get into right. the game. And by the time you've done that, that's 20 minutes gone already, isn't it? Right, you know what right, I mean? right. Time. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's interesting. Well, so, um, in, so with Call of Duty, you say like, you know, you get to talk to people like around the world. How do you find your teams like how do you meet people through it to find the right team yeah go through like working with different people definitely so it's a i'll, I'll try and keep it brief because i could talk for a long time no, about that's this. Okay. no that's i mean part of it is like we're digging in <laughs> that's fine that's fine so basically like obviously to, to to compete and to get into that level you have to be at a certain stage in how good you are already you know right. you're basically in like a normal public game where you were to just search for a game you kind of have to be like the one who wins the game every time right. and then what happens and what happened to me was that there were these websites so one of them was called game battles at the time where you could sign up put your name on there you know and you could then like find a game against somebody else who was also very good basically right. and what happened was is i was playing in just a normal public game so i wasn't using that website and i was like doing quite well and then i had somebody message me saying like, why are you playing this? Why are you not playing competitively, et cetera, et cetera? And I was like, what do you mean? Why am I not? What, yeah. what, does, what does it mean? So he said, right, come on, come and talk to me. And he, he invited me and I started talking to him. We then played a few games together on this yeah. website. And kind of as it goes through, and I, it's difficult to say this without sounding arrogant, like yeah. I was better than this person. Yeah, and yeah. so what would happen is I'd play some games with him and then I'd have somebody else from another team who I played against and maybe won. Oh, and right. then say, we really want to play with you. Do you want to play? And then what well, you, right. you kind of work your way up. So it's kind of like you get recruited, like as people see. Yeah. Play. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It's not quite as like, well, it's not as formal as that uh, until it gets to like the semi pro. Uh, okay. I was kind of like teetering on the semi pro ish area of it, which is where it becomes like you get actual teams who actually pay and to fund you and go to places. Oh, okay. Right. And so they paid for my flight to go to Vegas and my gotcha. ticket, all of this sort of stuff. That right. makes sense. But, once you get to that point, 
it becomes a little bit more about who you know, if that makes sense. So it becomes quite like, I'm sure it's the same in loads of sports, right? It's like right, right. you, get, you, you get into the right circles and make friends with the right people who right. are associated with this bigger team. You get the idea. Right, um, right. So, yeah. And is it always like, you know, when you started playing and like making money and stuff off of it, was it always basically just as entertaining and as fun or did it add a level of like, uncomfortable mm. stress or <laughs> yeah that is, tell you what, that is actually a really 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 good question it's a little bit of both so yeah. because I'm so competitive like I actually struggle is not the right word but like now when I play I'm not playing competitive I'm just playing with like my friends and stuff right, like right. just casually and I I'm not anywhere near as engaged with it anymore like I'll be bored mm -hmm. after an hour or two or something right, right. But when I was playing like competitively, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, when I was playing competitively and I had a challenge and it was like, you know, all of this sort of stuff, I would, I, I could play all day, like literally all day. Oh, and, and all day. So, so it did make it more entertaining and engaging because it gave right. me something to strive for and everything. But when I got to that point, so for example, when we were going to Las Vegas to compete and right. like somebody paying for us to go out there, right. we have to... We, it was, it's called scrimming, so scrimmaging. So it's like where you practice, okay. basically. And like we had a schedule. So we had like, I had my work during the day and then I had I had a schedule into my diary. Like we're playing this team at that time, this team at that time. Right. And then the next day we'd have to like review. So we'd record the games. And then we'd sit together in a call and like look over the game we played yesterday. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Analyze why that happened and why we lost that one and all right. this sort of stuff. It became very detailed, but right. where it like I'm not a structured person in that way. Like I like to my own to do what yeah, I wanted. Yeah, and you, yeah, and when it became that I had, like I wanted to play all the time. Right. But when it became that I had to play at 8 p.m. for two hours and then a break and then had to play at 10, right, you know, right. whatever. Yeah. It, it it kind of took the fun out of it a little bit. Um, right. So it's, yeah, it's a difficult question to it answer. Would be, yeah, because it would be easy if like you happen to, on your own want to play at eight and like two hours would go by like nothing but because it's on the schedule <laughs> right, right exactly, it feels yeah. different <laughs> for sure yeah yeah it feels it feels more, it becomes a little bit more like a chore even though it shouldn't be and isn't right, uh, right. yeah but that yeah. okay well that's interesting so I uh people who know me well know that I am not a competitive person and never <laughs> really have been um and like you know playing I don't know, board games, just whatever it is, right? Uh, I never played sports really either. Everything that I kind of tried, I kind of quit because I just like it. Um, sure. Like piano lessons was the only thing I stuck with. And I'm pretty sure that's only because my mom made me. Uh, <laughs> but I hated sure. practicing like and didn't do like refused to do recitals. I think I did it one time because I don't like performing in front of people. Right. Yeah. But that being said, um, so what's funny is like the, what made me think of that question for you was like me thinking that like, Oh, it's fun until there's money. And you're saying, no, it's fun because there are stakes. And it's like, yeah, because you're competitive. Like it's the opposite. For me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's one of those things where like both of those personality traits have their positives and negatives. Like right, right. Because I'm so incredibly competitive. I get really stressed out when I'm not doing the best out of everybody. Right. And it could be, which is obviously, not great but also it's like that is what drives me to be the best and to right. be successful and to do all of these sort of things because right. like i want to i don't know i'm just I'm, I'm stubborn in that way do you know what i mean yeah, whereas yeah. you know somebody like yourself obviously it must be very freeing to just not really care do you know what i mean i, I, I in is. a way i would love that sometimes right, <laughs> right it is but also it would be nice to be like a little more competitive at times <laughs> just like you know feel like i had this you know inside i guess desire <laughs> to like yeah. be better or whatever you know but um that's funny so my i told you you know i have a daughter piper and she just turned seven and i noticed this from early on uh that she would get pretty stressed out about not winning things or like and a lot of it's like what she picks up from friends at daycare or now school oh. you know and she'll be like well you know, so-and-so, they said that I lost, but I won. That's not fair. They cheated, you know, like, uh, and then like, if we were doing something, I'm like, well, we're not competing. She's like, but I won. I was like, 
okay, but like, <laughs> yeah. that's you know. me. That's literally me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but her, so uh, her dad and I are, are divorced. We've been divorced basically since she was like one. Um, but she has a great stepmom and she has a little four-year-old brother now. But her dad has always been the natural competitive one. Uh, right. and he played lots of sports and his dad was a coach and whatnot, you know, um, and his mom played sports too. So they're, and they watch a lot of sports, you know, football, basketball, uh, American football, of course. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, and uh, they, so like, it was always just kind of funny. And I'm like, you know, talking to uh, an old coworker of mine who he was very naturally competitive and like we'd, you know, sitting side by side at work, just talking about different things. And it would always become apparent, like I wouldn't pick up on it, but he's like, Amy, he's like, that is not how a competitive person thinks. <laughs> <laughs> what you just said is the exact yeah. opposite. So like when I told him that I'm like trying to tell Piper, you know, like, just like cool it, like it doesn't matter. He's like, if it's like already kind of in her, like you, you can't really like, <laughs> I mean, it, it, out. It, you can't it, be dismissive of it, basically, right? Like, <laughs> well, I, I think it's like, you know, there's things, it gets a little bit deeper now, but there's things like competitiveness and maybe like, you know, it's like ADHD, for example, which right. like I'm almost certain I have just given how I am and all this sort of stuff. Right. Like, I don't like, I don't ever say that because it can, you, all you do is you use that to your advantage, right? It's like, right, it's, right. A, it's the case. Well, then, that's what helps me really hyper focus on things and really get become obsessive with things. And that's, right, right. Thing. that's how I do this and how I make my, I run my business. And like, there's, right. there's benefits to it. So it's basically like, it's like just utilizing that competitive spirit in the right way. Cause it can become right. a problem. Definitely. Right. Right. But right. it can also be like the biggest asset that you have, I think. So. Right. And like, for me, I feel like, like, okay, like if that's how she is, then that's fine. But like, I'm not adding any extra pressure to it, right? Sure. <laughs> I'm not saying yeah, that's, that's nice. Like, you know, I'm not like, yeah, you should win or whatever, right? I'm just like, I'm <laughs> <right>. <laughs> like yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So I was gonna ask you, and I only loosely know what this is because of podcasts that I listen to. Um, Twitch. So is that mm -hmm. the new thing that like? Or new as in I don't know how many years sure. <laughs> like for me is that because you said you used to like upload them to YouTube right yeah. yeah so they weren't like live watching them right so I did you could, live oh you could do that I, on YouTube I did live stream to YouTube as well a little oh, okay. bit basically Twitch is so like there's you can live stream on multiple different platforms like there's YouTube and Twitch and Rumble and Kick are like the four oh, okay. main you can yeah, stream yeah. on uh, Twitch is probably Twitch or YouTube are by far like the most popular ones of those. Yeah, I haven't heard of the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're more like to be honest, it's usually people that get kicked off of those two YouTube or Twitch <laughs> and don't go into those ones basically. Okay. But um, you know, not that I have a problem with that because I think you should be free to post. Sure. What you yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Right? They have, so, yeah, yeah. But that's um, why they're not the most popular. Yeah, yeah, exactly people. right. Um, and so yeah, I mean, Twitch is basically it's essentially gaming TV is probably the best way to describe mm -hmm. it. So, like, you know, some people might turn on BBC and watch a program on BBC, right. like younger people in general. It's not just, I mean, I have, I, I know somebody who's like 50 something who watches Twitch and stuff as well, right? Oh, right. Not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, some of the comedians I listen to like play games and like, yeah, they're, you know, 40s, yeah. 50s. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm not that I'm the biggest fan or anything, but if you know Snoop Dogg, he streams oh, on yeah. Twitch. He's a big Twitch streamer. Oh, does he? And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a big, I do yeah, like Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so like he does it, and it, but it's it's basically gaming TV. So you just go on there and like choose the game you want to watch, and right. you know it's quite good because you might watch somebody because they're really good at the game. Right. You, you might watch somebody because they're really bad at the game and it's funny, or you yeah. might watch somebody because they're just funny as a person. Okay. Like there's different avenues that people go down. If right, that makes right. sense. Um. So yeah, although that like that is the new, like I was speaking about posting on YouTube, the new right. thing now you do okay. post, but in general you live stream, like you stream on YouTube, and people gotcha. become so famous from doing that now. It's That's crazy. So cool. so, so, yeah. so Twitch, like you said, is like was basically made for gamers whereas youtube obviously you can do lots of different things on youtube live streaming them but exactly exactly yeah and, and you can now live stream lots of other stuff on twitch they have areas that's like just chatting so it could literally right. be like you could be doing it like we could be doing this on twitch right now yeah, yeah. Really? it could be 
just talking and then we could have a like it could be live stream there could be a feed just like on facebook right. and people can come oh, right. in ask questions and talk and just that sort of like so that, oh, it doesn't cool. have to be gaming right. um but in general that's what twitch is I, known for so it's funny i do know a lady who um gosh she's probably uh at least early 50s I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm like worried. I'm like, I don't think she watches this, but I'm just like, I'm, <laughs> I'm so bad with age. But um, she, I know she had told me that she does Twitch uh, for, she builds um, like, you know, Lego sets, like mm -hmm. big Lego yeah. sets. And she said, she's just hot, like just talks, just like chats or whatever, like, you know, while she's doing it. And that, yeah, she's got follower, you know, people that love it. I was like, oh, because at the time I only knew it for video games. I was like, yeah. what? You can do... <laughs> Oh, you, you you know, one of the big categories on there is like cooking. People cook. Oh, okay. People live stream themselves cooking and just like that's have funny. fun towards people. People do like Lego. It's kind of like, I think if there's like a, if there's a community right. for, uh, for a hobby, right? there's a place on Twitch for it, essentially, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, good. that's it cool. Is good, yeah. Well, I mentioned, you know, one of my obsessions being Hanson, the band. And Hanson, it's made up of three brothers. Um, and the youngest so when they were big in 97 they were really little so like the drummer the youngest was like 11 at the time that okay. they started like traveling internationally in like arenas and whatnot so it was like a great and the oldest was maybe 14 so they were like young young um but so uh so the drummer and I are essentially the same age but he's always been into games and uh he I know has a twitch channel because I don't watch it but sometimes some of the fan pages will like post little clips, funny clips. Sure. Yeah. So he's on there and he's, so I feel like that's another thing where, like you said, it's like, well, people are probably watching it because it's Zach Hansen and, you know, fans of the music and the, and he's just funny. Right. So it's like, sure. He likes playing games. We'll watch you play games. Like we'll watch you do whatever you want. That's exactly <laughs> it. it. It's almost a little bit like, I mean, it sounds a little bit sad in a way, but I do think people, because it's usually like, You'd have the screen is like the game, and then in the bottom right hand corner, yeah, so you, you get to see him, our head or there. their face or whatever. And people use it literally like a just going to hang out with somebody. Like yeah. people don't even necessarily have to care, like you say, about what's on in the background or what game's being played. It's more right, just right. that you like the person or they're funny right, or right. whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's interesting. That's cool. So, did you ever do it when? Did you stop doing it? You know, for like you know money before uh twitch came out i but no so i did you i did i did stream on twitch a little oh, you bit did stream twitch. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I did i did i tried no no i primarily streamed on youtube back okay. in the day that's the same as if i'm old but back in the day i know I did, right yeah it's like i feel like in terms of gaming like it happened yeah, yeah. so fast <laughs> I used to do it on YouTube. I did do it a little bit on Twitch because you can obviously stream to like multiple platforms at the same time. Right. So you kind of might as well. Um, but I, I'm, it's actually a little bit sad. Really. Like I stopped, I, I, when I was like, so I'd grown quite a following on my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and I uh, was making a little bit of money. It wasn't anything special, but a little bit of money. And I kind of like, as I was getting older, I, I, it became a little bit uncool. And oh, then, yeah. you know, like all of this different stuff happens. Like you're at secondary school and, and or high school or whatever. Right, and, it, right. you know, and so I stopped doing it. Um, but that's obviously where the idea of my business came from. Right, but I, right. I, I do look back at it now and sort of be like, because it was right at the start of YouTube when I was doing this. Oh, and if right. I had have carried on doing this now, and like you look at the YouTubers that there are now. Oh, and right, right. Millions of followers and they're making millions of pounds a month and stuff. So I, I, I'm a little bit like, damn i wish i didn't right. stop that is what it is isn't it so right right oh my gosh well so um i could ask a bunch of more questions about this but i do want to be aware of the time and i appreciate you taking you know the time to meet with me so i'm oh. going to ask you because i know that you have uh, a good answer for this so i like to ask everyone if they have any ghost or alien stories or anything that is unexplained uh you know happened to them someone they know what they think about it <laughs> yeah yeah uh so yeah well i mean you can see the aliens yes, so you got yeah so aliens <laughs> is your answer <laughs> so i i don't have like alien stories as it as in like i've not had anything experience i've not experienced anything like that right. i've experienced definitely some unusual things yeah uh, I, I, one of them i'll touch on i don't i've not really said that to many people so i'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute but i yeah. that it's funny just as a bit of backstory i used to be 
like I'd say I'd say maybe like six years up to about six years ago I was like hard science like a hard atheist oh, hard yeah. like if if it's not in a science book it's obviously not real don't be so stupid what are you talking about right, right. ghosts aren't real aliens aren't real all of this sort of stuff and then there was like uh you know stuff started to like you know, I, I started to like, I saw something on YouTube or whatever mm-hmm. that talked about it. And then I don't know if you know about this, but like the Pentagon released like footage of UAP. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and like, that came out and, and it was like a, I'd already been kind of building up to like realizing that there was something going on here. And it was a bit of a moment for me. It was like, huh. So they've said they're not looking into this for all this time. Right. They also, they've come out and they're showing you videos of it publicly. Right. What's going on here? And then I, I, from then I like fell down the rabbit hole. Oh my basically. gosh, that's great. And uh, like I'm like deep into it in consciousness and all this sort of stuff. But basically right really, really, really near the start of kind of before I was decided I was definitely convinced and, and this sort of stuff, mm-hmm. I was looking into the whole what's going on, what's happening, is it real, is it not, is it aliens, is it us, et cetera, right. et cetera. And I remember sitting in a car park with uh, my girlfriend mm-hmm. and we're like in the supermarket car park or whatever and in the car I just pulled up and I was like we, we like like looking at, I mean I, I've been obsessed with space it's funny because I've been obsessed with space the whole time yeah but before I was oh, like that's funny yeah yeah so you yeah I've got I've got a whole I won't show you but I've got a whole space tattoo my whole arm and everything yeah. oh my gosh so, um so like, I was obsessed with space but from a very hard science perspective and then so I loved looking at Right. the stars and all that sort of stuff anyway right. so it wasn't that natural for me to do that but I was just sort of getting into the whole hmm maybe there's more stuff up there or whatever right. and I remember watching a plane that we me, me and Emma Emma's my partner we were watching a plane that was just going past or going above and it was the the light and it was just yeah, flashing yeah. it was just a normal plane, normal plane right. along. and then it basically like Look, and it's going to sound crazy, by the way, but I'm just going to say no, anyway. Okay. That's yeah, it, no judgment. I just want to hear. No, 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 no. I take it I mean, for what it is. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Um, and like, we was watching it, and it was just a plane, and then it essentially looked like somebody hit a rewind button on like an old TV. Yeah. So this plane that was like going along like that in the sky and flashing, it right. it essentially just went like that, and then <laughs> just went past again like a normal plane. Yeah. And me, and, me and Emma were like. What the hell did we just see? Right, like, right, because you both, yeah, that's a, right, we both more saw than it, one person. both looked at each other yeah. and we're like, what the hell was that? Because it's not like, you know, we didn't see a UFO or, or like anything like that. Right, it was like right. a, a random thing. Like, it, it was like, it's like we saw somebody pressed a rewind button right. on a plane that went back and then just carried on as if nothing happened and went forwards again. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Like, and that, that for me, I was like, Oh my god! I have no idea what right. it was. I don't right. know, but it was something. Like right. something's like something going on. Unexplained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm quite a big believer as well of like and, and like since the fact of like, if you're really like, adamantly don't believe, you know, like hypnosis, for example, you have to kind of want to be hypnotized for it to actually. Right. Work yeah, yeah. There's certain right people. There. Yeah, yeah. That are more. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, and it's because deep down, like, you want to be hypnotized. So there's people, like, who do hypnotherapy, and it's right. like they, they help people stop smoking, for example. Yeah, I know. I, like, yeah, there was we had a hypnotherapist in our B&I. Yeah, she was awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it doesn't, it, it works great if the right. person makes their own decision to go to that hypnotherapist and yes. really deep down wants that to ha- change and happen. Right. But if you were to, like, let's say, buy your partner or husband to yeah. uh, a, a, a package to go and see a hypnotherapist because I didn't want my partner, let's say, to to smoke or something right, like that. Right, right, and they're like deep down, they don't really want to stop. That is not and going they don't to want to be there. Them. Yeah, and, and, and I do. Whereas if they do want it to stop, it can have a profound effect on right. somebody. Yes, and I do believe it's very similar to things like ghosts and things like UFOs and everything, just right, an- right. anomalous stuff that if you truly deep down believe there is no possible chance this could happen, you will not experience anything. If there is part of you that is like open to the fact that it could be real, right? That you are able to somehow experience see or it. interpret these kinds of things. Um, yeah. And I don't mean that you see it because you want to see it. Right. I mean, just... you're more likely to experience something if you're, yeah, I don't know, like your, your energy is open to it or right, something like right. that. I'm but not, it's... yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So like with the, the hypnotism yeah it's like you're you're open to it right so that's why it works and it's like yeah so you're able to see things 
because you're open to it instead yeah. of like being like nope 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 nope, nope. <laughs> exactly because you're, you're you're like you're almost going to like block yourself off to it and like you're so adamant that it won't that you didn't see anything that right, you don't right. or whatever right so right, yeah right. It's, uh, it's strange but i'm you know i've not experienced anything crazy or up close or personal but yeah. i like I, said, I am like i have probably listened to every podcast read every book read it like like oh, yeah. deep down the rabbit hole of yeah, yeah aliens you know do they come from here are they extra temporal extra tempestuous right. extra, what, whatever interdimension i have no idea right but right. like something's going on and i do actually believe as well to kind of finish off on that that yeah. everything anomalous like aliens and ghosts and just else, yeah. UFOs, usos like un- under the water ones all of this sort of stuff oh, yeah 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 uh, like they're all some and consciousness as everything right. there is some strange unexplainable relationship between all of these different kinds of things like for example i don't believe mm-hmm. that these ufos and all this sort of stuff or aliens or, or abduct- anything i don't okay. believe it's little gray men that come okay. out okay yeah yeah you. do you know what i mean it's right. like there's, there's something else to this that mm-hmm. i don't know what it is i just right. know that there's something something's going on do you know what I mean (laughs) right 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 well so I listened to a podcast um I just started listening to it I don't know a couple months ago um it's called scared to death and it's by uh, a comedian named Dan Cummins and his wife Lindsay and um it's really fun so basically they tell like they they come each week and uh Dan tells like two different stories that he's sort of like researched and then Lindsay usually tells two stories that their listeners have emailed in about mm. their own experiences. And so the um like the the premise of this show is that they're not there to tear it apart or dissect it. It's just like let's just tell it as if and and imagine like if this is real, like let's react to the story, right? Yeah. And so uh so they do lots of ghost things and alien things. Um Aliens particularly scare the wife, Lindsay. And if you start listening, you'll learn like as you listen along that like she's got special things that she does before the stories. She has to wear like her like some fuzzy socks. She has to have her blanket. She has to have like a superstition. <laughs> like, yeah, she yeah. has like all yeah. these things. Um and uh but it's really it's really interesting. And also like, yeah, the the UFO ones when they um or any alien ones, right? When it is more than one person who was like there and saw it, or they don't even know each other, but like report it, you know, from the yeah, same yeah, right? Yeah. Like that's always wild. And um, same thing with like the the ghost or uh, demonic things. And sometimes they tell stories where it's like you know a either a neutral or like positive ghost experience. Um, sure, but. Uh, what I like is that like, you know, Dan always says even so he has another podcast where like he is sort of skeptical about like different types of stories. Uh, but so he's always quick to say like, it's not, and that's called the time suck. He's like, this isn't time suck. So like, I, you know, we're going in, he said, but what if he's like, you know, like they used to not be able to see germs, but that doesn't mean they didn't exist. Like maybe we don't have the technology yet to see all of or maybe things. technology isn't the answer to seeing this stuff as well that's um, a real possibility well, that's too. True. right right so it's like so maybe we just don't know yet how this mm-hmm. works you know how this works <laughs> definitely and you know what one thing i always say it's funny because my dad like so my me and my i got my like hard science hard 80s and from my dad oh yeah and i kind of like kind of got out of that and have become like i'm not I, i'm not religious in in any particular religion or right. I don't like the word spiritual, but I'm very like open to like, I don't know what is going on and I'm very right, open. Right. And and I've kind of like, obviously my dad knows that as well. And and he is now very into the UFO thing as well. Because I remember saying one of the nice. things, like I'd show him this like recorded case and this recorded case. And right. you mentioned like, you know, if there's two people that tell the same story, that seems coincidental. But there are reported cases of like sightings where 2000 people have reported the right. same thing. And, there, and there's all of the recorded phone calls to the police and, <laughs> right. you know uh reportings from the police saying they're also seeing it and all this sort of stuff yeah, um, yeah. 
yeah, and there's all these things. And what I'd say to him is, look, even if 99.9999999% of these cases are all rubbish, yes. even if one of them, just one of these things yes. over the, the whole lifetime of, yeah, yeah. is real, then it is real. Do you that, know what I mean? That is exactly what the comedian Dan says. He's yeah, okay. they're, they're always like, they're like, out of all the stuff, if just one is real, that's crazy enough. <laughs> Yeah, because That's, it means if, if right. one's real, then the it doesn't mean every other instance is real, but it means the thing it means itself that, is actually thing, real, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, great. Definitely. Yeah. So if you, uh, yeah, want a new podcast to listen to, uh, I recommend Scared to Death, and it's they're death, also okay. hilarious with it. Um, but yeah, but it, it's it's creepy. Um, so I don't have any ghost or alien stories myself. That's I just really like asking people to find mm. out what they what they like. Sure. And, uh, I also like came up with a theory after asking people, uh, and it's my best friend Kyle. Um, so he's very much, I'll say, is a love hate relationship with aliens. <laughs> like he loves the movies. Like it just scares. Him. He always ends up having like nightmares, right, about <laughs> okay. being abducted and whatnot. Um, but he, I guess, loves it, believes it, whatever. Um, and so, but I have always been more, I'll say, my take has always been like, sure, aliens are probably real. They don't interest me. I'm like, ghosts, <laughs> like, like, I don't yeah. dispute aliens, but ghosts are the things that like, I don't know, interest me. So I feel like there's either ghost people or alien people. And it doesn't mean that they don't believe in the other. It just means like, they really like one. But yeah. the, um, there was a movie that I was watching with Kyle that was, an alien movie so i knew it was going to be aliens but in the scene where like they walk into the kitchen and like i don't know like cabinet doors were open and there was like something up on the counter uh i said to kyle i realized it was like if i walked into that kitchen like them i would not have thought aliens i would have thought ghost so that's when it became like are you ghost leaning or alien leaning like if you couldn't tell what was going yeah. on in your house but something was up <laughs> that, that's likely it. to go <laughs> it, it's so that you get the ghost ghost people alien people yeah and i i am like a it's the same thing just being interpreted in different ways kind of person do you right. know what i mean i, I really so that's do interesting believe, yeah 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 because i mean it, like again like, nobody knows it, the, the truth of this or whatever but you can right. imagine say like that there's a somebody experiences something right and they are into go or, or believe in ghosts, so they right. see a ghost. Somebody experiences something that believes in aliens, they see something. They, it just depends on how they interpret it right, as well. Right. And I think that, that there's there's loads of cases where, and I, this is where I think that it's, for example, I don't believe it's like aliens from outer space that are coming right. in a spaceship from another planet and come okay. here. Something more more to it. That mm -hmm. there are loads of reported cases like where you know you spoke about like multiple people seeing it, but where. Right like let's say 50 people have experienced right. something something happened mm -hmm. but they all seem to report something slightly different and um, somebody saw this happen yeah somebody saw that happen and you can see where the crossover is but they're, they're interpreting it in a totally different way right. and that goes back to the whole ghost or alien oh, that's like, super interesting depends, which is why i think again it's not like uh i mean maybe it's not even something physical right like again it's not like a space maybe it is something that's like I don't know, interdimensional or whatever. Just, yeah, like I was thinking, like when you mentioned the plane thing, like it was like, I don't know, some kind of like time slip or like glitch. Yeah. Or whatever, right. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I mean, exactly. I have no right, idea. Right? Like, it's just like a weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, you know, I, I just, I'll throw a random thought out there, yeah. which, you know, I, I've never experienced anything ghost like or anything like that. But like, you know, I've seen people theorize about, well, maybe ghosts are like time slips where it's that, you know, like you get the. Oh, right. There's like a haunted house, for example, and it's like, you know, the maid died because blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, maybe there's people experience that because it's almost like it like reverts back to what it was and there's the the spirit or something of somebody there or whatever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like they're not actually there. That's like a it's yeah, like I've heard that where it's like almost like a recording, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just like on loop or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or it's on, on loop or it's just like there's like a glitch in time. Right. right. Something like that, and and that, that that's also probably why, like, a lot of this stuff is not repeatable. Like, you can't like go to a, let's just say a, a house that's haunted supposedly, right. 
you can't go there and replicate an experiment 10 times in a row and go therefore factually they exist right and right therefore sort of implies to me like there's obviously something going on right, don't know right. how, yeah, what, what's real what's not it seems like it's like glitches that happen do you know what I mean right right that's true yeah and if you send different people in at different times they might each experience something but it won't be the same something in the same way like every time Definitely. yeah 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 that's exactly it yeah Oh, it right. goes deep. It goes deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's so exciting. So, uh, yeah. So the only person that I ever asked that had stories of each uh, was a woman. Uh, she owns the English uh, cream tea company in uh, in England. Uh, okay. She's, yeah, she's outside of. I don't know. I feel like it took maybe an hour on the train to get to her uh, outside of London. But I met her through a BNI person, and. Uh, she said that like when she was I don't know 15 or something and like in school like I guess it, maybe it was a boarding school or something but it was like out at, she and the girls were out at night and they saw like you know all these blue lights in the sky that and she's a little bit older but like they didn't make sense right and they moved in a certain way and then years and years later like she kind of forgotten about it but she was out like as an adult or whatever and essentially saw like the exact same thing like again so it was yeah, like yeah. she saw him twice um and then they the house that they lived in uh they and like so it was essentially haunted like things were happening like you know footsteps upstairs when no one's upstairs and just different things and she said it started to feel a little more malevolent so they did actually have the house cleansed and sure. it went away and it went away so uh it's strange because right? it is the thing, it's like i've never experienced anything like that there's no actual proof of it but i'm very much like i love like, all of it yeah yeah. why yeah. couldn't it have happened like why couldn't right. it have happened do you know what i mean I, I i very much like i tell you what i'll tell you a story so i yeah. i have a friend actually who is a real flat earther real oh, flat earther, oh right? real okay and okay real as in i have not, not like met a real I've, I've heard about him i haven't met he, one. so th th this is, and i'm not about to defend flat earth just to be clear right but he he's he's a really intelligent guy he's like he's smart he did science in all of his a levels all of this right, sort of right. sort of stuff and now is absolutely 100 convinced that the earth is flat right or that it's not a globe and that right, space right. Is real and you can't get out there and all this sort of stuff and i have a lot of my I, like i love just entertaining the conversation because I don't sure, know. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have no just... idea, right? I love talking to him about why he believes things, why he yeah, does. Yeah, that's it. what I... I would want to know. I'd be like, how? Like, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so, so I, I sit and I have conversations with him. Like, for eight, I mean, my friends get annoyed because when we say we go out for a drink, me and him right. have a drink, and it's just all we talk about the whole time. <laughs> right? And, but a lot of my other friends are like, oh, for God, how could you possibly believe the earth is flat? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of get defensive on his behalf because. I know for a fact that my flat earth friend not only knows why he thinks the earth is flat, right. but he also knows more than like my other friends do why they believe the earth is a oh, globe. Right. And, it, and, and, he's, and he'll say to them, okay, so why do you believe that it's a globe then? Right. And then the answer that most people will give is like, oh, well, you know, like it, ju it just, obviously. That's, obviously what they, that's what they taught they just, us. Right, yeah, exactly. Right? And, and he's like, well, actually, why you believe it is blah, 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 and this and, the, you know, and he can explain it. And so, like, I'm I'm, I'm very, like, open to just having the conversation because yeah, yeah. nothing, nothing frustrates me more than when, even though it sounds like a completely ridiculous idea, yeah. to just go, oh, for God's sake, why do you believe that? Like, it's like, you have no idea. You don't know. Like, entertainment, right, right. you might be surprised. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, now I'm like, I got to find a flat earther. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it's honestly it is it is it's fascinating just talking to somebody like that because I mean like there, there's even the thing where like because obviously I, my my dad is very much like I told he yeah. into UFOs like I am now or, and everything but I, he knows I've got a flat Earth friend and he is like oh, God that is, that's just a step right, too right. far right yeah yeah and like, you know you don't know that because there's been things that my my friend has said to me he's like right. well why is that the case then why does this happen and um... and it makes you think it's like hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, the the classic one, for example, that he mm -hmm. says, it's a real thought provoker is like, yeah. we are on a spinning earth, right? rotating around the sun, right? The sun rotating around the Milky Way, the Milky right. Way rotating around other everything right. like that. But you look up at night and every star for as long as history ever yeah. is in the same place by maybe change the tiniest little bit. 
Right. Change the tiniest bit. So actually just logically think about that. If right. we are spinning and that's going round, right. And, and that's going round something else, then how are all the stars that you look at every right. night in the exact same in position same or, or, or like follow a pattern every single time? Right, right. Like, it doesn't actually make like logically it doesn't make sense right. I mean, like you know just if you just entertain that question it's yeah. fun to do why is that the case huh that's strange then look at you know what the explanations could be and right. and, and what the what the the consensus is on why that is and everything like that it's just right. it's just fun to think about isn't it do you know what i mean cool. yeah 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 that is fun <laughs> I love it. There you go. That'll be some Googling for you later. I know, right? Yeah, it's like, that's awesome. Well, I could talk to you, uh, you know, for another hour or so, but uh, I appreciate your time. Um, so I guess, do you have any, you know, anything else that you want to, that you want to share on anything? You know, I, I have really? a, a podcast that I listen to called Pete Holmes, uh, or Pete Holmes, You Made It Weird. And he always asks guests at the end, like, do you feel good? Like, is there anything else? <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything else I want to say. The only thing I would say actually is just be skeptical, but be open. Basically, be 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 critically think about everything that you that you're told, right. whether it be like whether you're told it by BBC or the mainstream news or by right. your friend who believes in flat Earth, and right. take them both equally and then make your own decisions on it. Don't weight one higher than the other just because it was told by somebody else. You know what I mean? Right, uh, right, right. That'll be my closing thoughts, I think. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah. And and like, you know, you mentioned your dad being so, and you for, you know, up until you're 21 or whatever, being like, you know, hard science, right? It was like, yeah, but the science, right? Like, you know, a hundred years before that, right? Like the science always changes or that science didn't exist yet. So like what science doesn't exist yet? <laughs> right exactly yeah. i'll tell you what I, I, there's one more thing i'll bring up just yeah. i thought it's a cool thing and i know you'll probably like to think about it which yeah. is that like when you're thinking about like science can science answer everything i don't I probably believe it can't or definitely not yet and there's the whole like is your brain you or is oh, there some yes more than you and the thought experiment that that i've it's off a podcast that i was listening yeah. to very recently which is like let's say you imagine in your head right now a red triangle and you can like picture like okay. you can picture that red triangle in your head yes where actually is that in your head right because if you were to right. chop your brain open there's not going to be a red triangle in your right, brain right somewhere, mm -hmm. right so if it is if, if if it's all physical and all to do with your brain and it's all to do with the electrodes and electro all yeah, this sort yeah. of stuff in your brain, where is that Right. Red triangle in your brain. Or think right. of a banana and you've got banana in your head right now. Where is that? <laughs> you can't right. find that banana. So I don't know. It's just, just, just an interesting thing to think about, that right? Yeah, There's yeah. arguments in the other way, which is, well, why if I poke your brain, does it affect your... Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be yeah. the o argument in the opposite way, right? Right, because right. I would say, well, it is just your brain because if I poke it, it affects how you... Right. Well, it's like the olden days with the scary lobotomies, like when that... <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? And it, right. has, and, and it has a definite effect on it, which actually would imply, okay, but well maybe it is just the brain. But then you have these other things that make you think, well, where's the red triangle? Right, where's right. The whatever. There's like, okay, well, it can't just be the brain. Right. Then, but right? well, now, I was like, now I'm, yeah, I was like, now this is a good thought experiment because it's experiment. Cause now I'm thinking like, just because the, you know, say whatever the little, lo lo the lobotomies that they did on people. Right. Just because now you think that they, aren't seeing anything or they're not there you can't ask they can't tell you so like right. for all we know their consciousness is still yes impact. and perhaps the output mechanism is just not working properly uh, maybe right. a little bit but more like, like they could still envision you know whatever in their head right maybe a bit <laughs> like your brain's the receiver and your consciousness or you are like a radio signal or something that is picked right. up through the brain so if you damage the radio receiver it right. damages the, the the audio that comes out but it doesn't right. damage the signal that's right, traveling right. The air, right so I yeah. love that. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe we'll have to schedule another one of these if you want. I think we will. I'm up <laughs> for that. Part yeah, two. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Joe. Have a, I know it's only Thursday, but have a great weekend. <laughs> it feels yeah, almost like Friday. Much. Yeah. I, I wish it was Friday. One more day. I yeah. know. Well, I guess you're at least at the end of your day, right? Like for me, it's like 11 a.m. So it's still yeah. early you're Thursday. Half you're at the end of Thursday. <laughs> Cool. All right. Yeah. Look, it was absolutely lovely. Thank you for having me on, Amy. And, yes, uh, absolutely. Definitely this is wonderful. Again. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. See you later. <laughs> bye. Right. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>